rise to beast, everything coming together. Yeah, that time is coming, my mind a hundred, my grind a hundred. Shout out my trainer for having my back and yeah, believing in me. Yeah, we war ready, tell them we war ready. Rise to beast. Uh, I'm not supposed to be undefeated. I'm not supposed to be a champion, says everybody else. But I believe that this was possible. So, believe in yourself. Yeah, we war ready, tell them we war ready. Rise to beast. My name is Raiz the Beast Aleem. I'm originally from Muskegon, Michigan. I've been living out in Vegas for four years. It's been a, a long journey. This uh, story is still being written. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a fun ride so far. Well, I got my black belt in karate when I was like 12 turning 13. Uh, and then after that, it was kind of like, what's next? You know, so uh, my dad took me to the boxing gym. I was naturally good. I just stuck with it. I uh, got to travel around and stuff like that. Uh, my ultimate goal was to become a world champion. It, it wasn't to go to the Olympics. It wasn't to uh, just to make money. It, it was to win. I'm from a small town in Michigan. So it's, uh, it, it was extremely hard to get work. You know, we used to always travel around to uh, Chicago, Ohio. Uh, even Detroit was like three hours away from, from my town, uh, Muskegon. Uh, it, it was just hard. I traveled to uh, Vegas before. I was in camp with Nonito Donaire, and uh, it was really great work. I, I believe he ended up winning his fight that I helped him prepare for. But when I was out here, something just kind of hit. Like, you know, if I'm really going to try to do something in this sport, I have to get out of the pond. You know, I have to get out of the pond and go to the ocean and swim with all the sharks, you know, all the real hitters, you know? Uh, and the, my biggest takeaway is like, nobody told me to do it. I just knew something inside me told me, this is what I had to do if I wanted to continue to pursue boxing. You know, I could have, picked another career but this has always been my thing so uh vegas was the light bulb and uh i made the move no family no friends uh just made a plan and decided to make it happen it was extremely challenging to get fights my first three fights came quick uh i, I fought i actually fought on hbo before uh back when that was around i fought on the adrian broner undercard i was the first fight of the night uh, i fought my first undefeated fighter he was 4-0 with maybe three knockouts i was 3-0 with like two knockouts and uh, i had the opportunity early in my career i decided to take that challenge i dropped him in the first round dominated every round and i won but after that nobody would touch me you know, I, I went like two years without a fight. It was just, uh, it, it was extremely challenging and almost kind of defeating because uh, all you want to do is compete as an athlete. So uh, I, I ended up signing with the, with the big time manager, uh, Cameron Duncan. You know, he was uh, managing Onito Donaire and all these other uh, former champions and current champions. So I'm thinking my career is going to take off. I'm good. I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. Well, I had a few fights and then Next thing you know, I'm on the shelf. A another two years went by, two and a half years went by. And it was just crazy. And it's, you know, I reached out to him. I told him I wanted to get released. You know, he uh, decided to release me. And then after that, it was like, okay, so what are you gonna do? I'm gonna move to Vegas. I'm gonna make this happen. Yeah, uh, I, I just did it with no help. It was just, uh, you know, it was a lot of adversity. Uh, people around me, we're fighting you know uh one of my friends was from kalamazoo you know um he had like seven fights in that time span and i had none my teammate johnny garcia you know a good friend of mine he he fought on showtime he fought uh ugas he gave ugas his first loss you know i was extremely happy happy for him we, we would spar all the time and stuff like that but i knew that that could be me you know i had all the talent i had the heart i had the skill it was just the opportunity. Will the opportunity ever come? I don't know. You know, I never had any help. I never had anybody around me who put me in this position. See, now if I was born in New York, if I was born in Cali, it'd be different. I'm from a small town, Muskegon, Michigan. You know, I come from a very traumatic uh, household. 
you know so as an adult I, I operate a certain way you know i'm not a loud mouth and whatever i'm, I'm humble i'm a first three black belt in muquan taekwondo karate so I, I know how to act right you know it, it, it's it's just uh been extremely challenging to get to where i'm at now but i've always foreseen that this it's taken a lot you know there there was times to where i was depressed you know i'd go to the gym ready to grind i'd, I'd put all my stuff on and i just sit there and i'm defeated and i'm like <sighs> huffing and puffing just like you know what i'm going home so i'd go home and then the next day i put my stuff on get ready to do it i go through the motions and i grind kill a workout but sometimes it's part of it sometimes you have to go through the motions and that's stuff that i went through you know always being an underdog nobody helping you doing it by yourself this is the life i chose this is it sometimes you have to go through the motions until next you know it just kick start that fire and uh then next you know at, at the end it's like one of the best workouts you've ever had so it's uh sometimes it's kind of necessary to just go through the motions until you can run full speed believe in yourself because i believed in me that i could get here when i'm not supposed to be here I'm, I'm not supposed to be here sitting here talking to you i'm not supposed to be undefeated i'm not supposed to be a champion says everybody else but i believe that this was possible so believe in yourself i've been boxing for like 16 years you know I've, I've, I've been an athlete my whole life i feel like i do a great job of listening to my body you know I, I know what it takes to prepare for war you know to get my body to an elite level you, I, i'm an elite athlete you know so uh get my cardio up there get my weight right getting my mind right you know so it's not only physically but it's also mentally you know you can be a, a 110 percent physically ready and not mentally be there and get knocked out because this is a dangerous sport you know so mentally you have to be there a hundred percent each and every time you step in that ring and i make sure that i'm that you know i don't i don't listen to people around me i believe in my process i believe in me that i'll find a way no matter what it, preparing for each fight is the same i'm preparing like he's a world champion like i'm fighting for another world title ever since i first started fighting I'm just uh, reaching for that next level, you know, so I'm trying to take a page out of uh, Floyd Mayweather's book, you know, him doing three a days. Okay, so that tells me he's building his body up by doing three a days, by doing two a days or whatnot. So that's something that I decided to do, you know, and I just have to listen to my body so I don't get burnt out. But I, I love doing three a days. It's extremely hard. So I'll be at the uh, boxing gym. I could spar six, eight, 10, 12 rounds, hit the mitts, hit the bag, doesn't matter. I go to the fitness gym right after and I get that second workout in. Jog on the uh, treadmill, shadow box 40 minutes, get on the elliptical, stretch, shower, go home, rest, eat a little bit, then get my last workout in. You know, like it's not done. <laughs> I got the one more workout and usually uh, I'll go to the Pilates gym and do an hour of hot Pilates or I'll go to the fitness gym and do something that I didn't do earlier. And this is extremely hard. Like at the end of the night, I don't even want to get up off the couch. You know, it's uh, it's hard, but it's necessary. You know, I'm building myself up not only mentally, but physically preparing for what comes next. there's no excuses at the end of the day there's no excuses so that's what it really comes down to like when you're in camp or leading up to camp you just can't do certain things and that's a standard that each fighter holds for themselves i hold myself to a high standard so there's no excuse sometimes it's hard you know you lose friends i've lost friends you lose women i've lost women you know but one thing i will not lose is a fight 
Well, when, when I first uh, moved to Vegas, I was at uh, Barry's Boxing Gym. Uh, I, I was trying to find a coach. I was uh, going to be coached by Augie Sanchez, but he was kind of tied up with the uh, Olympic team and, you know, whatever. We decided to kind of go our separate ways, so I kind of bounced around a little bit. I went to another gym, City Athletic, but prior to that, I had met Bobby. And we, at first, they didn't want us working with each other. They, they didn't want uh, him hitting the mitts with me or anything like that, which was weird. So then some time goes by, uh, we get cool or whatever. Uh, we decide, you know, we hit the mitts, we work, and uh, I, have, I have to leave. I, I need to find a coach. Because I, I was training myself out here for like the first year and a half. So I went to City Athletic, you know, trying to find a coach, couldn't find a coach. Went to Johnny Taco's gym trying to find a coach, couldn't find a coach. I had an opportunity to um, spar Nonito Donaire. He had another fight coming up. So I went to Bones Adams Boxing Gym. And uh, when I was sparring Nonito, Bobby was working my corner because I trust him. We were hitting the mitts. He, he, things that he said resonated with me. It, it made sense. I, I've been in the game for a while, so I know when a coach is a coach and when he's not. So I'm not gonna have anybody in my corner who I don't believe in. But then, uh, so after I was sparring Onido, I had a fight coming up. I fought a undefeated fighter, beat him up, dominated, whatever. But uh, then I decided I was working with uh, Bones Adams. And he had a few other fighters, which, you know, he's a coach, good coach. We just, uh, we were probably working with each other for maybe a year and a half to two years and decided to go our separate ways, differences in opinion. So then after that, I'm back to the drawing board. I need a coach. So I uh, reached out to Bobby like, hey, you know, we we're talking a little bit. And, you know, I, he was kind of on the fence with like uh, training fighters or pro fighters because he had a lot of stuff going on in his life. And I just, you know, kind of laid it out there like, yo, we can do this. Boom, 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 boom. And, you know, one thing led to another. Uh, we clicked and uh, the rest is history. I want to earn each and every fan, everybody who watches me, but I'm an exciting fighter. You know, when you watch Raya Salim, you see somebody who brings it. You see a lot of heart. You see a lot of skill. You, you, might, you might see something you've never seen in, in a good way. Uh, I'm, I'm not running. I'm not holding. I'm, I'm throwing punches and bunches. I'm, I'm going left. I'm going right. I'm diverse. I'm just really trying to knock the guy out in front of me. Yeah, I don't care. If I'm up on all the scorecards in the 12th round with the punching, I'm trying to knock you out. I'm trying to get you out of there. That's my goal. One of my goals is obviously to uh, remain undefeated. You know, but I also want people to say, like when they talk about Raheem Salim, he not only fought the best, but he beat the best. And, you know, I, I want to keep winning. I want to win more belts, more titles. I don't believe there's ever been a unified champion in my division, the 122 pound division. So that is an obvious goal of mine, which is very obtainable. But just winning isn't good enough for me. I have to dominate. You know, I have to have clear control from start to finish. That's a win to me. I've been on a knockout streak. I think what my last six, seven fights, I've, I've, I've stopped everybody. And this upcoming fight will be no different.